We'll call the 26th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephen? Here. D. Van Akron? Here. T. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Weninger? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting as entered on the record. Moved and second that the minutes of the previous meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Winninger, would you lead us in a pledge, please? Would you grab Pat's microphone, please? Or I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public forum, Pat? Yes, public forum. Susan Hun Hundley, step up to the microphone and you'll have five minutes. <laughs> Susan, would you just tap it, please, to make sure it's on? Thank you. I am Susan Hunley. My address is 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. This is my business address. It's uh, English Manor, bed and breakfast, and where I reside. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to address the council this evening. I have concerns with the Great Lakes South Pier project, and I wish to express them to the council before a vote to approve an agreement between the two between the city of Sheboygan and Great Lakes is taken. I first became aware of the project plan by Great Lakes at a meeting that Sheboygan lodging owners and or managers were invited to last October. The meeting was held at the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce with members of the chamber staff, the mayor, and other city officials and the Sheboygan Development Corporation in attendance. If I've forgotten anybody, I'm sorry. The Sheboygan Development Corporation shared the plans for the South Pier project that at the time were unfinished, allowed us to ask questions, and then those told those of us in lodging that the inf information shared regarding the project were to be kept com confidential. This is where I first became concerned. I could not believe that the city of Sheboygan would consider not informing the alderman Alter women. I know recent statements have been made that the number of individuals involved had to be kept at a minimum, but in my opinion, who is more important than the alderman, elected by and representing the people who live in Sheboygan? To begin with, the number who were involved in this project already were all the city officials, the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority, the Sheboygan Development Corporation, and the Friends of Sheboygan quite a number of individuals. Other concerns I have regarding the project. The city claims that Great Lakes is the only, or as stated, I'm sorry, is the only developer, developer interested in developing the South Pier. Yet they agreed to an exclusionary agreement with Great Lakes at the beginning, thus preventing others who may have been interested. The amount of money I wasn't feeling well today, and I literally came out of a sick bed to attend, so I'm sorry. The amount of money that the city of Sheboygan is committing to this project, Great Lakes has built 16 other projects and only needed city funds for, other pro for one other project, and that was the Kansas City project, a city that is at least 10 times the size of Sheboygan and required only one-third the money requested for the South Pier project. In my opinion, this is not a fair comparison. 
occupancy figures. No lodging representative from Sheboygan was ever consulted to see if what is projected is realistic. Great Lakes has said that they need financial help because Sheboygan is not a known tourist destination. This I feel is true, but I blame, but I feel the blame belongs at the city of Sheboygan, who has severely affected the promotion of Sheboygan by the by the Chamber CVB to the tune of minus 62.8% less dollars for marketing in 2002 than in 1999. These figures were supplied by the Chamber. Room tax collection has increased every year, yet the CVB has minus 62.8% for marketing in four years. Shame on the city officials who have been involved with this happening. The room tax collected by myself and the other 516 rooms in Sheboygan is to promote Sheboygan, not a slush fund for who knows what. The incentives offered Great Lakes in the contract regarding their collection of room tax dollars and how they use these dollars. An, inter an attorney, excuse me, an attorney retained by myself in Lakeview Mansion has served the city with papers today stating that the way the contract is, stru is structured is in an illegal use of room tax dollars. Do you really want to vote on a contract that is illegal according to the state statute regarding room tax use? Our attorney worked through the weekend to have this information ready to serve the city. After I informed, I informed him, I had conversations last week with a few city officials who stated that any information regarding this project was important for the altar people to have before the vote. The papers are served on the city today for this reason only, to help you, the altar people, to make an informed decision with all the facts. Now regarding the papers served on the city Susan, today. If I may interrupt, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Renee Susha. I'm Renee Susha, and my home address is 303 St. Clair Avenue, and that is in the city of Sheboygan. I am the owner of Lakeview Mansion Bed and Breakfast. It is Sheboygan's only lodging facility right now overlooking Lake Michigan. On the nights when Blue Harbor Resort is oversold, their overflow customers will expect upscale accommodations overlooking the lake. And I would expect to get a lot of referrals from this establishment. My dad is a mason who would love to help construct this project. In order to avoid being laid off this winter, he's been building a school in southern Illinois. So as you can see, my family has a lot to gain from this project going through. However, I was born and raised here, and I was taught to do the right thing, and that's why I'm one of the parties that served papers today to the city, and it might jeopardize this project. The reason the papers were served is because the city has not been complying with the room tax statute for the past several years. For example, in 2002, the city kept 50% of the room tax money when according to the statute they were only entitled to keep 17%. So that is, uh, according to the numbers that Susan quoted, 62% reduction for the amount of money that was going to the Convention and Visitors Bureau to promote the city. If you're going to build a convention center, you need to have the money available to promote it. In June of 2002, the Sheboygan Lodging Group was formed. Nine out of the 11 lodging facilities that were collecting room tax came to the city to say, could you please create a commission? Those establishments included the Holiday Inn Express, Harbor Winds, Baymont, Super 8, Ramada Inn, Fountain Park, Brownstone Inn, English Manor, and Lakeview Mansion. When we requested that a room tax commission be, for, be formed as outlined in the statute, the city set up a room tax advisory committee it turned out that's all it was, was an advisory committee. We were hoping it would evolve into the commission, and that didn't happen. The commission would have the power to disperse the room tax according to the statute. In October, I addressed the council, and I gave everybody a copy of the statute, and it probably is no surprise that I'm back here again today. Um, also in September, the lodging group sent a letter to everybody on the council here and asked that the commission be formed by November 1st. And this is when things started getting kind of strange. We never heard back from any of you before the November 1st deadline. 
But we did get invited to meetings with the SDC, the Chamber, the Friends of Sheboygan. And we decided, uh, after we didn't hear back whether you're going to do a commission or not, that it was time to get our attorney involved. And I'd like to mention that our attorney helped write the room tax statute, so he's very familiar with what you can and cannot do with room tax money. After our attorney uh, met with uh, the city attorney, uh, we were informed that a commission would still not be established. Now, after reviewing the proposed contract between the city and Great Lakes, it's obvious that you plan to continue to violate the statute. The statute clearly states that a commission shall use the room tax revenue that it receives from a municipality to promote and develop tourism, including the support of a convention center. It does not say anywhere in the statute that the city may spend the money directly on the support of a convention center. If you set up the commission, you will be in compliance with the law. I'm not here just to complain. I do have a few suggestions for the council. Um, first of all, obviously, you need to set up a room tax commission. Secondly, I would suggest that you do not approve the contract with Great Lakes in its current state. Um, recently, in the headlines in the paper said the city does not have enough money to keep the library open for its current hours. An alderman recently told me you might not turn the fountain on this year because the city cannot pay the $20,000 water bill. And if the city can't pay its bill, I don't see how you can afford to give a $12.5 million interest-free loan to Great Lakes. One possibility would be to start charging Great Lakes some rent for their use of the convention center rather than only charging them $1 a year. Third, I would suggest that you listen to other developers. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to supply a list of names and phone numbers of other developers that are interested in coming to Sheboygan. On an important development like this, it probably would have been wise to get some public input via a referendum to know which direction to go. My last suggestion for this council is to stop letting the wealthy business people pull the strings behind the scenes. I'm disgusted with the intimidation tactics and threats that were used against me by some of these folks. I can only imagine the peer pressure that the aldermen receive from these people when important issues are on the line. In summary, I have more to personally gain from this project going through than if it doesn't. However, I cannot sit here and allow tax dollars to be spent illegally and irresponsibly. Bob Ginther. Uh, Bob Ginther. Uh, my business address is 1104 Wisconsin Avenue. Honorable Mayor, all the persons guest. Um, I just want to reinstate the benefits uh, to the city of Sheboygan and the citizens who live here. Uh, the Blue Water Resort and Conference Center will create employment opportunities. After its completion, as many as 300 jobs will exist, not to mention the hundreds of jobs that will be created during construction. It will add $52 million of property evaluation to the city tax rolls. If it is not built, the cost to purchase the property and already completed improvements will have to be paid for through increased property taxes. The Blue Water Resort and Conference Center will be the catalyst for further development to occur, creating more jobs and additional property assessments and requiring more construction workers to build them. The benefits would greatly outweigh the perceived shortfalls of the vocal few. In regard to the pending lawsuit, uh, because I am not an attorney, I can only question the timing. Um, it seems the suit has questionable merit. Uh, if there was any doubt at all of the use of the room tax to pay back the loan, why were there no questions raised earlier? I believe this is a last minute effort to quash the development of this great opportunity before us. As was mentioned, this, avail this information was available as of last October. I urge all the, all the persons to trust in the legal advice of your city attorney and the attorneys hired to negotiate this contract. A yes vote will help ensure Sheboygan continues to move forward into the next 150 years. Are there any questions the other persons may have? Alderman Van Akron. Yeah, yeah, I guess, Bob, quick, and you're giving me part of your five minutes. Um, <laughs> do you feel comfortable that the um, developer will try to use local labor? I spoke with Tom Kramer of Kramer Brothers Construction, and I, I trust him at his word to use local contractors. Uh, Mr. Kramer knows the importance of keeping his word as a reputable, honest contractor. 
Um, I personally believe through my 25 years experience as a carpenter and supervisor that you'll get a better built product using local craftsmen. They're going to have more pride in this. They're going to be going by every day. Their family, their friends, their neighbors are going to see this building. Uh, I believe there's a cost saving that Mr. Kramer can pass on to the developers by not having his people travel across the state and pay room and board. Uh, there's also a benefit to the citizens of our community and where we can put more people interested in the trades into apprenticeship programs. So I do believe Mr. Kramer will keep his word. I see he sees the same benefits to using local employees and contractors that I do. Are there any other questions I can answer? Thank you. D. Olson. Hi, my name is Dee Olson. I'm the Executive Director for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Mayor Schramm, members of the Council, and interested citizens. Tonight will likely be a remarkable time in Sheboygan's history. So much has been invested in this project so far, and its future now lies in your hands. The Chamber of Commerce supports this project, as do most of our 650 Chamber members. Tourism is a $264 million industry in Sheboygan County. An opportunity like this may only come our way once. This is a unique opportunity. Sheboygan has become the envy of many communities across the state because we are on the threshold of such a project. As was recently expressed by Tourism Secretary Kevin Shabilsky while attending the Sesquicentennial Founders Day commencement. We recognize that there are many, many varied issues that have come into play as this project has moved along. There have been many obstacles to slay in the process, and there will continue to be related issues to be addressed by the Common Council and the related city committees. I'll note tonight that the Chamber worked to negotiate a room tax agreement based on the recent room tax increase. That increase facilitates the development of funds for the Convention Center, but it will also elevate tourism promotion dollars available to the Chamber and its Convention Visitors Bureau. The, room, the new room tax agreement and the 2% increase recently passed will take the CVB to a new level. Uh, I know that ref figures were reported tonight of 38%. Our records have always reflected the minimum amount that we've ever received was 48% at any given point. I just wanted to clarify that. Although we were conservative in our spending for 2002, in part because we did not have as much money, but also because it was post 9-11, and the national travel industry was predicting a downturn in travel. In reality, we have had a better than expected year, allowing us carryover dollars from 2002 to 2003. In 2002, the CVB room tax dollars were approximately $150,000. The related room tax dollars budgeted for 2003 totaled 339, 307 dollars. We anticipate at least a 5 to 10 percent increase in room tax dollar generation for 2004 because of the increase and because of two major events coming to the Sheboygan area, the Wisconsin Men's Bowling Tournament and the PGA Championship both being held in 2004. We have come out strong in 2003 with a good marketing plan. We have already participated in four shows since January, with yet one more slated for fall. We have increased our visibility in advertising and national publications, and the results have been gratifying. Last year, we had over 15,000 visitor inquiries for the entire year. The first quarter of this year, the Chamber and CVB has responded to more than 15,000 inquiries. In just the first quarter, just 300 inquiries less than we had for the entire year of 2002. To emphasize the magnitude of the room tax dollars generated by the Blue Harbor Resort, which will underwrite the Convention Center, please note that the projections are for 700,000 700, in 2005. That's what that project will generate in room tax dollars. In 2010, <coughs> 
it is 876,000, and in 2015, it is $1,015,000. The Chamber and our Board of Directors has entered into a contract with the City of Sheboygan to serve as the tourism promotion entity for the city. We believe we have a good contract with the city and that tourism promotion interests of the city are best served with that new contract. A few of the Chamber's lodging members would like to see a different approach to overseeing the collection and disbursement of the room tax dollars. The Chamber's contract has a release of claims clause engaging our full support of the contract. As a result, we do not and will not support anything but the current contract. D, time's up. We appreciate your vote tonight. Gary Dalmas. <clears throat> I'm Gary Dalmas, President of Sheboygan Development Corp. Honorable Mayor, Alderman and Alder Ladies. Again, I'm standing here to speak to you about a document that will be presented to you tonight for your approval. As you know and have already heard tonight, it comes packed with emotion. Before I go on a couple things, I'd like to address some comments that were made. When we called a meeting with the lodging group, yes, the SDC was present, and yes, I represented the SDC, and yes, I asked that it be in confidentiality. Anytime you are negotiating a deal of this magnitude, things need to be confidential. It wasn't confidential to hide it from any older people, but it was more to keep it out of the newspapers and to screw up any type of negotiations. There was a comment made about occupancy. The Sheboygan Development Corporation also hired U.S. Realty. We paid approximately $20,000 to do a market study in Sheboygan to see whether a water park convention center would fly. It came back and said this is economically and financially feasible. Occupancy rates are being averaged out for Great Lakes at approximately 73%. These are not made up numbers. As you see, there's a lot of representation by the SDC friends of Sheboygan and the business community sitting in these council chambers this evening. These individuals have committed our time and resources to bring to you and the citizens of Sheboygan that are watching tonight what we be, believe to be one of the most exciting projects to happen in 150 years. A 50 plus million dollar project for the South Pier. This will be a great, no I think it will be an awesome attraction for Sheboygan. And I think it will also provide a long-needed convention center. This document that you have in front of you is a good one. It's been worked on extensively by people you hired. You hired Coyles and Brady, one of the finest law firms. You had a bond council that worked with your mayor and your city attorney and your finance director, Rich Gephardt, and they worked hard. You had a planning department that worked at it. You had city engineering. We believe that this document is a good one, and we believe in it. One that your former mayor, Richard Snyder, and the Sheboygan Press endorsed extensively, giving it a ringing endorsement, and we want you to believe in it also and accept it this evening. It is unfortunate that we have just heard from two business people that would take this opportunity to start a lawsuit against the city and virtually try and stop this fantastic project. One that I reiterate is supported by the business community. Look at your, at your audience. It is supported by the business community wholeheartedly. I'm convinced that you will see beyond this move that was just executed today and move forward with a positive vote. It would be a loss to Sheboygan if we react out of fear because of this latest threat. I also spoke with their attorney and when I spoke with their attorney, there was no mention that the use of the money set for the room tax was illegal. So I, I question when someone stands up here and says to you, this is illegal, without giving you time to look at it. Let's not react out of fear because of a threat. Mark Vaccaro sits right there, 
Tom Sather sits right next to him. These are good people who will be good corporate neighbors for the city of Sheboygan. And we'll be proud to have them here. But time is of essence. We are at the altar right now. And it's time to make the commitment. And we need to pass something to make Sheboygan even a better place to live and work. You have this type of opportunity sometimes only once in a lifetime. Let's not let this one slip away from us. I know that you will do what is best for the city of Sheboygan and its citizens. And I believe that is to pass this document tonight and move this project forward. Thank you for allowing me to address this audience. Anybody else? That's our five. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I would ask to pull forward 2654. This committee report from the Committee of the Whole, which is referring resolution 33203 from Alderman Berg, approving the development agreement for the city and the redevelopment authority for the Great Lakes Company for development of the portion of South Pier District and rep recommending that this resolution be put upon its passage and I would move that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Move to the second a committee report be accepted and adopted under discussion. Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, first of all I need to um, I need to amend the resolution after the last um, be it further resolved we will add, I guess, be it further, further resolved, um, the wording of subject to further changes to accommodate issues that may be raised by developers, proposed lenders, which such future changes, other than minor or non-substantial, shall require approval of the redevelopment and the Common Council. I would move that that be put upon its passage. Moved and second that it be put upon its passage. <clears throat> Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, what we're doing here is uh, Great Lakes is going to have to go out to their lenders now, and if something happens that they come back with a different, uh, their lenders request something that isn't in this agreement, they would have to come back to the Council and Redevelopment Authority and make you aware, and, and you would have to approve any changes to this, and that's what we're doing by, by adding that language. Okay. okay. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I did try to shorten this up a little bit, so hopefully it won't take me too long. You all know I have a lot to say. Just on amendment. This is on the amendment? Okay. Just on the amendment. Just on the amendment? Well, I support the amendment. Okay. Put that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's short. <laughs> That's short. <laughs> Alderman Perez. Nothing on the amendment. <laughs> all right. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, now under Could discussion. I have a copy of that amendment when you're all done? No, you were supposed to write that. I don't write that fast. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <clears throat> now I move to put the resolution as amended, put upon its passage. Let's move to a second. The resolution be put upon its passage as amended. As under amended. discussion. Now under discussion. You know, we, we, Your Honor, we heard this evening um, in our public forum some questions about the legality of the room tax. So I guess I'd like. Excuse me. Uh, oh, I'm question? sorry. You're right. I I missed one. There's another amendment I was supposed to add to that amendment. I missed it. <coughs> On the first page, there's a the second third whereas. It says that the city will pay for and own a 20,000 square foot convention center, 7,000 square foot. That should read 29,000, correct? Correct. So I would move that that be changed right. from the room. Moved and second that the uh, numbers be changed on the convention center under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now I would move that the amendment as amendment be put upon its passage. It's moved and second that the amendment as amended, be well, the resolution as amended. amended be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing, I'm, I'm hearing none. Alderman Perez. 
This is on the uh, actual load here. Amendment. An amendment. No amendment. <laughs> <laughs> We're still on amendments. Oh, Alderman yes. Warner on amendment. I support the amendment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now again, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Can I do it one more Moved time? Moved and second that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Now under discussion. Correct. Now we're back to, we heard things tonight about the legality of whether we can use uh, room taxes for the purposes that we've been using in the past and in the future. And I guess I would like to comment from the city attorney um, on whether or not we, he feels comfortable that what we're doing is correct. Uh, in my opinion, what the city is, uh, city's. It doesn't have a microphone. It's on. Okay. The, uh, the way we've been using the room tax is, is legal. Uh, the, the language that the uh, bed and breakfast people pick up on is, is or one of the things that they, they've used. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, they haven't filed a lawsuit yet. What they filed with the city clerk today was a notice of circumstances of claim and claim, uh, which is a precursor to a lawsuit, and it's required under the statutes that if you sue a municipality, you have to provide a notice of claim first. Uh, we've got 120 days in which to act on that claim one way or another uh, prior to them being able to file a lawsuit. But uh, they point to language in the statute that says any amount of room tax collected must be spent on tourism promotion and develop that must be spent on tourism promotion and development shall either be spent directly by the municipality on tourism promotion and development or shall be forwarded to the commission for its municipality if the municipality has created a commission. Uh, the statute does not require a single municipality to create a room tax commission. Uh, in my view, the, the main purpose of a room tax commission and where it makes sense to use one is, uh, and it's provided in the statute, if you have a zone where you've got city of Sheboygan, town of Sheboygan, town of Wilson, village of Kohler, city of, or village of Elkhart Lake, uh, all pooling their resources for a regional, for regional tourism promotion, uh, it makes sense to create a commission because then you've got multiple jurisdictions uh, dealing with the same dollars and you're able to pool the dollars and you've got a body then that has representation from each of the entities. Uh, a commission to me for a single municipality uh, is redundant. Uh, it's, it's another layer. Uh, the city council in effect acts as the commission when you've got a single municipality um, collecting and dealing with room tax. Uh, the, the, the language they, they point to is shall be spent directly by the municipality on tourism promotion and development. And they're arguing that that means that the city has to actually buy all the billboards and buy the radio advertising and buy TV advertising, that, that that's how you directly spend money. You can't contract with another entity such as the chamber to spend the money. And I, I would frankly just disagree with that interpretation. I think the language in the statute is shall either be spent directly by the municipality on tourism promotion and development or shall be forwarded to the commission. In other words, it shall either be spent directly by the city or indirectly by the commission. And uh, I don't see that there's any requirement that if the city uh, contracts with another party to assist in uh, tourism promotion and efforts that it has to create a commission. Uh, another issue that's been brought up is uh, what the definition of tourism promotion and development is under the statute. Uh, as the aldermen recall, this, this issue has been brought up before uh, in that some of the things that the council has authorized, in other words, uh, Council has chosen to do is provide some of the room tax dollars to the Chamber of Commerce and retain some of the uh, room tax dollars. But because the city has retained those room tax dollars doesn't mean we've put all those monies into the general fund. That's not what 
for, for any purpose. That's not what we've done. We have categories in the city budget that, that we expend directly for tourism promotion and development. And that's, that's money that the council annually appropriates and budgets for tourism promotion. Uh, every year, the amount that we have set aside for just going into the general fund out of the room tax collections have been 10%. And that's what I think we have to do statutorily. And that's, we've been doing that for years. We've been contracting with the Chamber of Commerce for years for uh, uh, tourism promotion and development. Uh, I think what we're doing is fine. Using, <coughs> using room tax from the Great Lakes project for purchase, basically for building a city-owned convention center, I think is classically tourism promotion and development. Uh, Going back to the creation of the Harbor Center Master Plan a number of years ago, it's been one of the goals of the city to, to have a convention center. Without having room tax dollars to do that, I, I frankly don't see that it's going to happen. And uh, certainly not going to happen without uh, uh, just building a freestanding convention center uh, by the city. Uh, you're going to need room tax dollars to to pay for that, and that's that's what the proposal is here. Is that yes, we're putting money into the Great Lakes project. Part of that, and a good share of that, is towards the city-owned convention center, which will be the the money from the room tax will come back to the city to pay off the debt for the borrowing that relates to the convention center. Uh, so, in in short. I think what the city has been doing with the room tax dollars is appropriate and legal, and uh, it will be also under this proposed development agreement with Great Lakes. Hold your thought a minute. Hang on, Terry. Alderman Perez, did you want to go on to ask a question about it? Oh, okay. Thanks, Steve. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this room tax thing because, you know, I, I too am suspect of, of the timing that this is brought for, forth on 3 o'clock in the afternoon of that we're going to do this. We actually were talking about this back, as admitted by the people that talked today, back in October, August, September. Um, we did set up a, a committee that talked to them, and we explained these things over and over. I'm sure they may not like the answers they're getting, but they were given the answers. Now, it's their right to, to pursue if they want, but I, I hope that this council um, doesn't allow this two people to override what 16 of us were elected to do here tonight based on the city attorneys. I trust that he'll have to handle the legal end of this. Uh, that's why we have him and we hire uh, Brady and Corals or whoever it was uh, to do those things for to do those things for us. I'm sorry. Corals and Brady. Uh, um, lawyers and lawyers, you know. Uh, <laughs> they handle the law for us. And if they feel comfortable about what we've been doing for all these years, we've been in these contracts for many years with the Chamber of Commerce um, to do, do these things. I feel confident in, that, in what we're doing and it becomes their problem to handle this side. It's our problem now to look at what we have to do tonight and let's not let two people stand in the way what we were elected to do. Okay. Alderman, all right. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I suppose the day finally got here that everybody was anxiously waiting for. I'd like to read, because I think, Pat, I believe you're, you're in charge of putting these little captions on the agendas. And it's a very, very appropriate caption here, and I'm going to read it because council has the opportunity to see it, but the public doesn't. The quotation uh, it says, the best decision makers are those who are willing to suffer the most over their decisions, but still retain their ability to be decisive. Now that is important because every time I speak on this project, I'm called a critic anti-business, anti-peer, and I've even been accused of trying to clog the system. And I can guarantee you, neither one of those is true. Does this property need to be developed? Absolutely. Do I support it? Absolutely. Is this community better because of all this development that has occurred and will continue to occur? Absolutely. This community was founded by people and women of vision. We are 
people a vision too. So there's nothing wrong about with the project. Before I get into my, my little my little spill here, where is a copy of this site of this uh, notice of claim? How, why were the council members given a copy? It comes to council, it comes to council tomorrow night. When, City clerk just when, got it at three o'clock or right. so. Fine, and is that the procedure? Yes. Yes. Good. I'm glad we're following it this time. I, I do have a copy here, Alderman Perez, if you'd like one. Uh, well. I, I don't know that I could take 15 minutes to read that, but I know, but I know that uh, there's been other instances where notices of claim have been filed, and we are provided a copy. Right. Now, that, is only a, that is only proper, and I wish that someone would have done that. And the reason I'm saying this is because the issue here hasn't been, is this a good project? The issue has been, one, process. We haven't been following the process. We have a process, and we don't follow it. We try to circumvent it. We circumvented the province of this council. We went around. We backstroked try to cover our bases, and we still miss one important committee, the Room Tax Advisory Committee. They were never consulted with, about this project. And that has been an issue all along. Every time I voice my opinion, Juan, you're anti-business, you're, anti you're anti-peer. The other issue was input by the people of this community and by the city council. Now, this may sound rhetorical, but we are elected to conduct business on behalf of the public, not on our behalf. We have to take that job serious. We have to give the public and ourselves enough time to, for input, enough time to scrutinize the facts and come back with an answer of yes or no. Here we're going to vote on this thing here, contract agreement. We don't even know what the, site, what the pleadings are in this lawsuit that's pending. We don't know how it impacts this, this contract. Now, this has been a little frustrating for me because every time I turn around and ask questions, nobody wants to give me answers. Wait, it's coming around, we're making some changes, pages, more pages are being added. <coughs> the other issue was the injection of the amount of money that we're putting into this project on behalf of the taxpayers again. Now, if the mayor feels comfortable with that, if Rich feels comfortable with that, SDC feels comfortable with that, the friends, everybody involved feels comfortable with that, great. Some of us don't. And the other thing that I don't appreciate and haven't appreciated since is that the council should have never been put in a position, in an unfair position, where we're running out of time. We tend to focus most on, more on the deadline than we do on the details because we're out of time. We've got to act. We've already spent too much money on it. We should back out. Well, we didn't put ourselves in that position. Somebody did. Somehow we find ourselves up against the wall. Okay, now we got no place to go. And if we act the other way, we're in trouble. Those are some of the things that have bothered me from the very, very beginning. I've looked at the risk. There are risks. There's more risks than were, than were itemized the last time. But that's okay. Am I willing to go on a limb? I think I'm going to do it. But I'm going to ask the mayor. If he supports this with his heart and mind and soul, because if this thing goes belly up, if that lawsuit prevails and we're counting all our jelly beans on room tax revenue and they prevail, where's the money going to come from? I support 100% the project. It's a good project for our community and the citizens of this community. Support 100%? I do. Rich, you've looked at the numbers. I'd like to address Rich. Sure. You've looked at the numbers carefully, back and forth. One time you said you were scared. Are you still scared? The statement I made last week still applies this week. You're still scared? I have a concern on long-term potential risk. Okay. I'll bet on your number. Thank you. Okay, all the reports. Thank you, Honor. Uh, question for the city attorney. Uh, first of all, the room tax offset, I don't think the commission that they're talking about makes much difference. But do we need an amendment to protect ourselves in case they're successful in some way? Uh, we made amendments today that there would be changes if the developers, finance institution wants, needs something. Uh, don't we need something to protect us just in case the room tax? And also, I know the city of Milwaukee has, I think it's called a local exposition tax. It's really kind of like a sales tax on bar and food in an area. And I think that's where the convention center is. So I do think there's another way to 
finance this if the room tax would go. I don't know if that has to be in place before it's done or not, but uh, I guess I feel more comfortable if there was some kind of protective amendment in there regarding this room tax, if, if something would come of this. Uh, do you have an opinion on that? Well, I guess my opinion is that it's proper to spend room tax dollars for a convention center. And that's what we're doing in the Great Lakes Project. Uh, that's not an issue of whether or not police overtime is properly tourism promotion and development. I don't think uh, anyone would have an argument that the development of a convention center, city-owned, with room tax dollars is, is not appropriate, because I, I think it's, it is appropriate and it's legal. Well, I think it's appropriate too, but that, that, I guess that's not, you know, there's somebody that's saying it's not appropriate and hopefully they're wrong. Uh, I guess, what protection do we have if somehow they succeed in doing what they're trying to do? And do we need an amendment to protect ourselves in that case? In essence, do we vote on this contract today, depending on $25 million of room tax, and then find out we don't have the room tax? Well, where are we going from there? I, I well, we're going to collect the room tax regardless if the project goes. I mean, uh, you fill up a room, you collect room tax. Right. What, what, the, uh, what the agreement provides is a guaranteed room tax, or guaranteed payment <laughs> that the developer gets credit for the room tax received. Uh, regardless, we'll receive room tax, assuming the, the project uh, is successful and fills up rooms. The issue is, I guess you're raising, is whether or not you could use that room tax that you collect to pay the debt for the convention center that you built. And um, I believe you can. I don't see any basis to argue that you couldn't use that room tax that you collect on that project uh, for, the, uh, for the convention center. Well, I don't, I don't either. I'm just questioning, you know, if we find out a month from now that we can't, where do we stand? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't find out a month from now, first oh. of all, because uh, we've got 120 days in which to respond to this notice. And uh, take, say you take three months to respond to the notice. Uh, you wouldn't file the lawsuit for at least three months, and you wouldn't get a decision probably for another year after that. So. Well, that I understand, but I would, and I assume you've had a little, some time to look at this, but I. I would think council would be very interested in knowing if two weeks from now you have a different opinion on this. Of course, I won't be here, so it's, it's not my problem, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess that's my concern, whether there should be some contingent amendment in here just to protect us in case two weeks from now you have a different opinion. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking uh, all the reports just a short-term thing before the project actually proceeded, or are you, you saying that... Well, once, once they start digging the hole and building the building, it's too late. And I would certainly hope that your office or Quarles and Brady or whatever is going to have an opinion that we're okay before that starts. You know, that we're confident that if the, this lawsuit does come to fruition, mm -hmm. that we will win. Well, I... I I can tell you right now, and I'll tell you in two weeks, and I'll tell you in a month, that on that aspect of it, I, I think we're solid. Uh, could a judge say that use of room tax to pay police overtime for the 4th of July parade, uh, 4th of July, is, you know, stretching the bounds? Could be. Mm -hmm. And, you'd, you know, that's, that's a possibility that I could conceive. I don't think that that's the case, because I think a judge would say that that's a legislative decision. But that's a possibility, and you'd be out, you know, for the future tax years, maybe $12,000 or something, you'd have to use other sources of funds. But for this project, for use of room tax for the convention center, uh, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, you know, were there going to be a decision, or could there be a decision rendered in the next several weeks or a month uh, then I, I guess what you're suggesting might not be a bad idea to, to have some contingency that uh, 
it would be contingent on the successful outcome of some lawsuit. But the problem with that is that you're not going to have a decision like that for probably a year, one well, way or another. Well, I realize you're not going to have a decision, but uh, I would assume that your opinion today is that mm -hmm. it's, it's not a problem. My concern is after you start looking at this two weeks from now, your opinion is that maybe it is a problem. Well, um, I can tell you I've been looking at this since the issue was raised a year ago, maybe longer, and my opinion hasn't changed. I, I'm still confident that the city's use of the room tax dollars is legal and appropriate. Okay. Um, could I change in a couple of weeks? I suppose anything can happen, but I don't anticipate it. Okay, you don't feel that there's any need for any kind of amendment to the contract for that? Not that would, not that would uh, be prior to construction. No, uh, you know anything that would be insurance would be later on down the road after the project is up and running. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And, and I guess I do trust Steve on that because first place, Steve is an expert in municipal and state code. That's what his job is. He's our city attorney. So he is looking after our interests. And second, Steve's elected. I know that because I voted for him. And uh, I voted for him because I trusted him. And I trusted his judgment. And so I believe, I believe what he says is correct. And he is correct also that this was discussed at least a year ago. I know I asked him that last summer. Same question regarding the room tax. If it was legal to use it for a convention center, when we at one time had the South Pier Advisory Group. But so beyond that, now I'm ready to say what I came to say. Mayor, fellow council members, we have debated every aspect of this project. We must at times make difficult decisions, decisions that will have an impact for years and in fact decades into the future. That is why we have spent so much time reviewing this agreement, discussing its implications, and debating its merits. Many times I hear someone in an elected position say, we have to do what the people want. Well, in my district, this is what the people want. Well, often it is true that we have to do what the people want. Yet, I would argue that it is not always so. Sometimes we have more information than our constituents, and often we must make decisions that are based on the information we have or are not popular. This is what we are elected to do in our representative form of government, make the tough decisions. Public opinion can be swayed by what is printed, by what is broadcast, or by fads and misinformation. We were elected to wade through all the pertinent information, review and question it, amend and change it, and then to recommend and vote for or against an issue. We are now at the final step in this process. In any issue, it is easy to bring out the negatives. We see it in political campaigns. We see it when special interests are involved in issues such as this. We see the negatives brought into play by those with selfish interests, be they personal, political, or philosophical. I believe it is always more difficult to move forward than it is to maintain the status quo or to block progress. It is much harder to bring the positives and the benefits to the forefront when fear and angst are used as weapons to divide. We are not talking about dumping a truckload of bricks on the 8th Street, calling it a plaza a day late and a dollar short, 10 years beyond its time. This is real bricks and mortar expansion of our tax base an expansion within our boundaries on land we own and we control the destiny of. We must look forward, we must look to the future as well as we can. I am convinced this project, the Blue Harbor Resort and Convention Center, will be the catalyst that propels Sheboygan forward for decades, providing jobs, positive economic impact, and a bright future. To all those involved, Mayor Schramm, the SDC, the Friends, Great Lakes, and our city staff. I thank you for your vision and hard work. To my colleagues, I challenge you to take a step forward for Sheboygan, for your city's future. Let's support this project 100% and 
and pass the unanimous ballot of approval. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Before I vote yes, I think I'd like to engage in a little more buyer remorse for this project. Uh, in an ideal world, a developer would come to us and say, I want to build you a $50 million uh, convention center uh, and hotel, pay $50,000 an acre for a 99-year land lease, hire three, 300 people, and I'd prefer to do it outside of a TIF district so you can profit to a half a million dollars worth of tax immediately next year's. Well, it's not an ideal world. It's a real world. And we compete with every other municipality up and down the lakefront. Do you think that Manitowoc, which has just lost 800 jobs, wouldn't like to develop some of their lakefront property, that they wouldn't be able to put together a very similar project and proposal? And I think that we need to look at that fact and the fact that even though this is a project I'm going to vote for, there are a number of things that come together which suggest that now is the time to vote. This is not a linear issue that deals with only a hotel or a convention center. It deals with a confluence of issues, uh, several of them being we have about a year and a half left to go in that TIF. We've already invested a substantial amount in property taxes and infrastructure. Uh, if we look at, we have no major other uh, uh, candidates for development uh, of that particular project or that particular area. And believe me, shanties that sell refrigerator magnets and uh, fudge are not likely to drive a lot of jobs or tax base. Uh, I would submit that the genie is out of the bottle so far that at this stage there's very little we can do to put it back in without irreparable harm. If there is buyer's remorse, it comes in a number of areas. We are within, I believe, two thousandths of our debt limit. And if my uh, addition is right, that's we've got about $10,000 cushion in our debt limit. Uh, uh, we better recap the tires on our vehicles. That's all I've got to say. Uh, and unfortunately, that impacts on other areas and other service uh, that we dearly need. The promises we made to those who still suffer in terms of stormwater tax. Uh, we need to uh, look at how we fund that. We need to realize that we are now likely going to forestall our stormwater project unless future councils have the ability to prohibit rain in the city of Sheboygan, which if they do, I think we're onto something. Uh, there is no current reopener clause in this particular uh, document that invites a dialogue with regard to structuring, restructuring our debt in the event that the room tax revenue 15 years out does not meet its projections. And I guess of some concern also is right now my two oldest grandchildren, uh, Emil, excuse me, Natalie and Joshua are in middle school. By the time this debt is realized, they will be in their late 30s. Notwithstanding all of that, I think that this is arguably one of the biggest events that has ever uh, if you would, uh, take a place in our history uh, since James Farnsworth decided to build a training post in Sheboygan. And my guess is if James Farnsworth came back now, he'd say, you know, that training post that I decided to put in Sheboygan, it was darn well worth the risk. And I submit that this is also. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Every metropolitan area in the United States is faced with a major issue of what do we do with blighted areas, brownfields, and, and those kinds of things. I think Sheboygan has an exemplary record at dealing with this. When you look back at what's been accomplished in approximately the last 10 years, the Marina Project, Water Street, Our Way, Northgate, Washington Square, and so on, this is sort of the capstone project. I think we have to go ahead. And a question for the attorney. We got another development agreement tonight. Was there any significant changes in this agreement that we should know about? I think there are, Alderman Van Akron, and if you want to spend the time, I think we should should talk about those. Is there, is there a lot of them? Or? Uh, well, there's a lot of changes. I mean significant changes? I, I, th I think there's... There's a few that are significant in concept uh, that don't uh, don't change things, you know, uh, totally in concept, but but they're 
now in the document that, that are different than they, they were before. If you look specifically at the last sections of the agreement, there's some new paragraphs. Page, pages uh, 70 through 72. The, uh, these paragraphs weren't there before. The resort lender foreclosure and the condominium lender foreclosure. Uh, I guess I would ask Ann Comer, who's with Quarles and Brady, I would ask if she could come to the podium and perhaps uh, aid in the explanation of those those paragraphs for the for the council. I think we'd need to open the floor to do Your that. Honor. Your Honor, uh, even though she's hired by the city, she's not a city department head in our rules, so I would move to open the floor. Moved and second to open the floor under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And I'm not sure now, maybe. The lender for the uh, developer asked for uh, the changes that are reflected in paragraphs 42 and 43 of the document. Um, the lender wanted us to make it clear that in the event that the there was a foreclosure action involving that the lender's loan that the transfer of the project subject to a foreclosure or acceptance by the lender of a deed in lieu of foreclosure would be permitted by the city and a transfer from that lender to a purchaser would also be permitted by the city and the transferee neither the lender nor the transferee would have to meet the transfer limitations that were otherwise set forth in this agreement in the event of a voluntary transfer. That's one change. The other change is in the event of a foreclosure or the acceptance of a deed in lieu of foreclosure, the lender, if it takes the project over, is not going to be liable, personally liable, for the payments under the reimbursement agreement. That is the payments of amounts that are due under that reimbursement agreement. Neither will the first transferee from the lender be responsible for those payments. In that case, the developer will stay liable for the making of those payments under the, uh, under the reimbursement agreement. I think those are the significant changes reflected in paragraphs 42 and 43. And if you could hang out a minute, Alderman Porsche, if you want to ask the question. Yeah. Thank you. I thought you said voluntary transfer, but did I mishear you, or did you mean involuntary transfer? There are, I may have misspoke, <laughs> but there, there are restrictions in the agreement that the uh, developer is allowed to transfer the project under certain circumstances in a voluntary setting, in an involuntary setting where there's a foreclosure or deed in lieu of foreclosure. Those are the, in, that's what's discussed in paragraphs 42 and 43. Okay, so if they voluntary transfer to somebody else, then the They have to meet tilled. certain tests, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. there, there's also a change and it was discussed at the Committee of the Whole on page five, I'm sorry, uh, that's, it, it's in the definition of convention center project. It was changed from a minimum 600 capacity uh, convention center to uh, minimum 1,000 person capacity classroom style seating convention center. Uh, again, that, that was consistent with what was discussed at the Committee of the Whole by uh, by the developer. Okay. Uh, um, and off the top of your head, can you think of, this is a long document and there's, just bear with me one minute. One item, there's new reference to, uh, and it's in several places of the agreement, to an intercreditor agreement to be entered into. 
between the city and the, um, the lender for the developer. Um, and that will be subject to approval by both the redevelopment authority and the council under the, this document. But uh, that intercreditor agreement will, again, be a contract between us and the lender and address issues on priority and notice of, by one party to the other if there's a default in the project, an opportunity to cure by the other party, uh, various other provisions that are sort of typical in intercreditor agreement. But intercreditor means an agreement between two creditors that are providing, in this case, uh, uh, are lending money to the developer for the project. So there, there's reference to that intercreditor agreement in here. Alderman Schultz, did you have a question for Ann? You're waiting. No. Okay. There are some changes in the damage destruction paragraph, which is paragraph 15. from the last draft that you saw. And uh, and that's after the, well, it's part of the first, first sentence. There's a semicolon after the condition it was immediately prior to the casualty, and then it's added as provided, however, if a default has occurred and is continuing under this agreement or any of the sub-agreements, then subject to the rights of the resort lender, the city or the authority may elect not to permit the resort LLC to rebuild, repair, or replace the resort project. And a, a similar provision uh, after the immediately prior to casualty in the next sentence. Um, and at the end of that paragraph 15, you see a new sentence that's added in there. That reads, if the resort project or the convention center project is not rebuilt, repaired, and or replaced following fire damage or other casualty, that, sh that shall not operate to release Resort LLC from its liabilities and obligations under the reimbursement agreement for the payment of all amounts due and owing under the reimbursement agreement. Uh, I can't remember if it was in the the version that you received last Monday or not, but on the water park operation, that's paragraph 23. There's language that reads, it's the second sentence, subject to the restrictions imposed in good faith by the resort LLC from time uh, should be from time to time concerning capacity at the water park for reasons of life safety or the quality of the experience of the water park guests. That's new That's language. language. And I, I think that was from the, a change from the language I had before. And also the uh, two sentences further down, there's a new sentence that reads, the resort LLC shall not be required to make advanced sales of admissions to the water park. There are some changes in the indemnification section, section 28. Um, added to, uh, that 
would be G in the first paragraph where it reads any damage. This is uh, the this first paragraph is the developer's indemnifications to the city and the authority where they'll hold us harmless. And G says any damage to or breach by the resort or the developer, resort LLC, or condominium LLC, their contractors, subcontractors, agents, employees, invitees, or condominium transferees of the engineer barrier as described in the remedial action plan and or and this is the addition, and or any wrongful or intentional or negligent act or omission on the part of developer, resort LLC, or condominium LLC, or their contractors, subcontractors, agents, employees, invitees, or condominium transferees, which would cause the city not to be in compliance with the remedial action plan. Um, the the last sentence of that first paragraph, there was reference to, uh, it reads, in addition, the developer, et cetera, shall not be liable for any release during the course of construction of any hazardous substances, substance located on the resort site uh, or the other sites. Uh, now it reads, on the date that resort LLC or condominium LLC or developer commenced any work on uh, any of the resort site, or condominium site, or the convention center site. Uh, in various drafts previously, we had gone from the date of this agreement that that, that would first get triggered. Then we went to the, the date of uh, entry into the leases uh, at the closing. And this this is in between. In the event there were to be a situation where uh, we allowed the developer on site to start doing some site work before actually closing. Uh, this language would, would say from that point on, uh, the, uh, the developer wouldn't be liable for any release during the course of construction, uh, but not, not prior to that time. Uh, similar language that uh, in the next paragraph that resort LLC or condominium LLC or developer commenced any work or any of the on any of the resort site or the condominium site or the convention center site. Uh, and that is the, the city and the redevelopment authorities indemnification to the developer that um, in subsection D there any release by the city or the authority uh, of petroleum products or hazardous materials or hazardous substances on, upon, or into the resort project, which products or materials or substances were not present at, under, or under, at, under, or on the resort site, condominium site, convention center site, on the date, again, that the resort LLC or condominium LLC or developer commenced any work on the project rather than of the date of this agreement. And then the uh, the last, there's an additional last sentence of that second paragraph. It says, notwithstanding the foregoing, neither the city nor the authority shall be liable for any claims, liabilities, or demands arising from any acts or omissions on the part of the developer, uh, resort LLC, condominium LLC, their contractor, subcontractors, et cetera. There's a definition of the term hazardous substance to mean any flammable explosives, radioactive materials, et cetera. Uh, then there's a new sentence also, that uh, a new paragraph, the last paragraph of section 28 that you currently got in your clean version says, the city shall have the right to inspect the resort site, the resort project, the, other, the rest of the site, not less than once each year in order to assure that the sites are in compliance with the remedial action plan as required by the plan. And in making these inspections, the city will use its best efforts not to unreasonably interfere with the operation of the project. And a resort LLC at its cost and expense would be responsible for maintenance and repair of the engineered barrier within the resort site and the condominium site and the convention center site. Uh, under the remedial action plan, one part of that is that there's a soil, soil maintenance plan that we're responsible for. And 
this is another reason why uh, the DNR is happy that we're leasing the site as opposed to selling it, is that uh, we're responsible for annually inspecting the South Pier, uh, the Rice property, to make sure that the engineered barrier that's in place uh, is still intact. Uh, and this allows us to uh, get on the site to, to check those things. And to the extent, for instance, part of the engineered barrier is the parking lots. Uh, where there's a parking lot, that constitutes the engineered barrier. So if we do an inspection and find that uh, there's cracks in the engineered barrier in the concrete or asphalt, whatever it is, that would expose part of the soils underneath that. That would have to be repaired uh, so that we maintain the integrity of the engineered barrier. Uh, we're putting this engineered barrier on all the if you will, the, the non-building sites and the buildings and parking lots and so forth and the streets act as the engineered barrier on the balance of the site. Um. Okay. Can I, I go for a couple questions or you got something sure. else? Uh, that's fine. I think that's okay. most of the changes. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I feel some need for some reason to uh, come to your defense. Uh, earlier this year, I had some critical remarks uh, to say to you, uh, and still I found your office open and avail available to me this year uh, for Alderman Perez to stand up and say that, or to criticize you and say that he's uninformed and that he's vice president of the council. I think if he chose to be informed, if he contacted you, came to your office, I think your office would be open to him and uh, willing to talk with him. Uh, the city attorney's office is open, and the city attorney is very uh, uh, welcome to talk with people and meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. No one should stand up and say that they're uninformed. If they are, uh, they have to accept some of that blame themselves. Um, I think to, uh, to criticize you and your office and uh, your team working on this, on this issue uh, because we didn't get a copy of the claim that was filed at 3 o'clock this afternoon is playing into the hands of the people that filed that claim. They had a reason for bringing it in at 3 o'clock this afternoon. They knew it was late. Um, so I, I, don't, uh, I think it's unfair criticism. I don't think it's, it's warranted. Um, I'm going to make some comments later this evening. Uh, being that this is my last meeting on this council, and in, in my remarks, I'm going to I, I mention uh, about people contacting department heads and others. If you've got a question, uh, call somebody. Everybody's willing to work with you. Uh, I found everybody cooperative 100%. Anytime I asked any questions or had any problems, so uh, I think the criticism is is somewhat unfounded on in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to one, make one thing perfectly clear. The only people that ever influenced me on the, the decision I'm going to make tonight is the people of Sheboygan. The citizens of Sheboygan, I was not influenced by business owners at all. I just want to make that clear. And also, I am confident that this will not be a sore thumb to the people of Sheboygan like the marina has become. I think the South Pier is going to be a good project. And I look forward to bringing my children there on opening day. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. And no, I'm not going to respond to your comments. Steve, question for you. We're talking about you, your, your, of the opinion that the use of the room tax is appropriate in the construction of the convention center. Are there any, is there any money going to the construction of the, uh, the resort or the condo? Any room tax money going into that? Not room tax money, no. Not room tax money, none. In any way, shape, or form. Not for the <laughs> resort or condos, no. There better not be any. Okay, very good. We've been, we've been very uh, meticulous in maintaining and segregating out those funds that are used for the convention center versus, and, and parking lot versus the resort and the condominiums. Very good, thank you. Alderman Port. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Uh, we were just talking about endemications for the land. Uh, thought it occurred to me, since we're leasing them the land and lawyers like to name everybody involved, if somebody drowns in that pool because we're leasing the land, will we be named in those lawsuits? And if so, is there any kind of indemnification for the city for that? Uh, I believe there is. Uh, uh, certainly, the city could be named in any sort of suit, uh, you know, on the basis that we own the land. So it could be could be in there. I believe there's a, and maybe Ann can find it faster than I can. Um, there's one general catch-all at the the end of the. Uh, second paragraph, and I'm not sure if this specifically addresses that, but notwithstanding the foregoing, uh, neither the city nor the authority should be liable for any claims, liabilities, or demands arising from the acts or omissions on the part of the developer, the resort LLC, the condominium LLC, or their contractor, subcontractors, agents, employees, invitees, or condominium transferees. Um, that's one area that I, I somewhat addressed. There's also a there's also an indemnity uh, for the failure to comply with laws, rules, regulations, and ordinances, and damage or injury to persons as a result of that. Okay. But, but if somebody drowns, it's not necessarily anybody's fault. It just happens. No, and the, there, it, there's there's also in uh, the first paragraph sub F, the developer uh, indemnifies and defends and holds harmless the city and the authority for injury to or death of any person at the resort project or the condominium project or the convention center project. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. I promise after we take the vote, we'll take a five minute break and then if you have to leave, you guys can get out of here, so. <coughs> Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to complain and simple that I support the South Pier project. We are finally putting the dot on the I in Sheboygan's Marina. I strongly support this project. Believe it will be a big success if we will greatly benefit from that decision. When the marina project was first introduced, there were resistance. But now we can look back and see what a wonderful addition it is to the city of Sheboygan. We built the marina, and now we need to step up to the next phase, the South Pier project. We are now in the year 2003. Times have changed. Families have changed in the city of Sheboygan have changed. We need an attraction for our beautiful city. The indoor water park, the hotel, and the convention center will attract tourists. Remember the old saying, you need to spend money to make money. That is exactly what we need to do. Yes, it is a risk, but isn't every business a risk? Almost every, every decision is a risk. I believe the risk is small and versus the potential of this investment. The city has lots of buffers, the GPA golf tournament, Road America, and many smaller events. There will be jobs for the Sheboygan people. No jobs with a chance to disappear to China or Mexico, but jobs that will stay in the city of Sheboygan. At the end, I will support this project, and I urge everyone else to do so as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Shortest speech of the night. Okay. My vote will reflect what I truly believe is the wishes of my constituents. And one other item, to appease the ghost of Mr. Farnsworth, who I believe is present tonight, his first name is my favorite name, it's William. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've said time and time again to you and to a couple other department heads, I would not support this unless I knew we could also keep up with stormwater management and with the police station. And I would like either you or Rich Gebhardt to explain how we can do this and yet do stormwater management and the police station. Right. Thank you. Your Honor. Uh, 
as far as changes, uh, there's an exhibit F that's just loose on your desk that would substitute for the exhibit F, that reimbursement schedule that just uh, is text. This, this is the new exhibit F that would be substituted. Um, as we reviewed uh, last week in the Committee of the Hall, uh, looked at the debt limit projection uh, through 2005. And uh, in that, we we're looking at the starting with a uh, having debt as 2.5% of our equalized values as, as the end of 2002. And we are uh, paying about $6 million in maturities each year. The one factor that's probably the variable is to estimate what the increase in equalized values will be during the next three years. And uh, we used an average of 5.6% over the three years. And that's, uh, you know, with the Acuity project, with the Great Lakes project, that's probably a reasonable level. Um, based on that and the issuance of $17 million for the South Pier project, uh, in 2003, and then $3 million a year for the regular capital improvements program for the streets and sewers and stormwater. Um, we would be right around 3% at the end of 2003. Uh, with, in 2004, with um, about 3.9 million uh, issuance for District 6 and the 3 million for the regular program. And some other uh, small borrowings for TIF districts, we would continue to be about 2.9%. And then uh, we're looking at uh, in 2005, the issuance of 6.7 million for the police station and the $3 million for the regular program. Uh, we would continue to be at 2.9%. Now, there are some variables in there, but as, as far as the stormwater program, of course, that would be through the Capital Improvements Commission. Uh, what their right priorities would be in the recommendations to the council and the council's acceptance of those. Uh, but we would be maintaining the $3 million level through these estimates. Okay, Betty? Okay, sure. Thank you. So we can keep tracking and do it all. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I was sitting quietly and told myself I wouldn't say anything else. But it's my last night, so I can do whatever I want now. Uh, first of well, all, well, not anything. Yeah, well. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask to open the floor to Mike Lipam because I have a question. I, I think the redevelopment authority met this evening, and I would like to have the chairman of the redevelopment tell us what that vote was. So I'm not aware of that. Moved and second to open the floor to Mike Lipam. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mike? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of the entire Redevelopment Authority for the City of Sheboygan, I'm pleased to report that we did meet tonight, and after review and questioning, we, with five members present, unanimously passed the, business, or the development agreement, and it's with that unified and strong voice that we recommend Council also approve it tonight. Thank you very much. I guess that kind of reaffirms what we've been saying all along. Thank you, Mike. Don't forget my key. Uh, we, uh, we've been doing this now, I think, nine months, ten months, something like this. Although the numbers may have changed a little bit in, in months, I think the premise of how we were doing this has been, stayed the same quite a long time. You know, back in August, July, we, we met in closed session to talk and give them the, the rights to first refusal and things like that. They brought forward some things and we then told the city uh, staff and the mayor to go ahead and negotiate on our behalf and I think they did that. <coughs> you know, back in August then, I think, I think it was August that we passed the 8% room tax. So I don't think it's any surprise to people that when we passed that 8% room tax, the whole reason we did that was based on what we were going to do here tonight, based on this. So this isn't a huge surprise, or shouldn't be a huge surprise, on how this is being funded through the room tax, because why do you think we change? And this, we were told that's why we were looking to change the room tax back at this time, was in order to continue this, um, to continue with this program and on this project. 
I, I have to agree with Val Scholes. It's, it's our last night, so we have to agree with Val Scholes. <laughs> and, and I agree that, you know, even during the years I've talked to Val, we've called each other at our homes and have talked on, on rare occasions. But we have talked to each other on, about things, and I would encourage all the aldermen to do that. And again, you know, there hasn't been a time where I stepped in the building, had to go talk about something with finance with Rich, or see Steve, or see Tom, or Paulette, or you, Mayor, that sometime during that conversation, I would say, how's the Great Lakes doing? And they would tell me. You know, all, every one of you could have done that. And, and feel free, you're all in this building, stop any time. I've never had Tom, Rich, or anybody not take the time to sit down and say. And every time I talk to you, and I think I've talked to you a couple times a week on, on things, but I'd always, at some point, I'd ask you, how's the Great Lakes coming? So I agree that, you know, you've got to take some of those forward steps, too, to ask those questions and get the right answers. Um, I hope we all support this tonight. You know, I'm fairly conservative up here on, on how to spend the dollars on, and watching out for the taxpayers. Uh, I think we've done the best job we can in making sure as many guarantees. Every time we had a stumbling block about something, we tried to put some type of guarantee to make sure we had that covered. And that's why this took so long. That's why so, so many of us uh, are a little frustrated on how many times this, the, the um, documents come back with changes, but some of that was to the betterment of the city to make sure that we did cover all of our bases and to make sure that we did have the best agreement. I think the only thing we probably made a mistake on doing this is we probably should have held this meeting on last fall sometime on a Monday night when the Packers were playing and we would have been out of here by 8 o'clock. Um, <laughs> But I think we've asked all the questions. I commend all the council for asking the questions. That's your job. You did a great job of, of asking the right questions. And now it's time to put, put it to a vote. Thank you. thank you. As soon as we get the next two, and then we'll put it to a vote. Alderman Orner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, Silas mentioned a new police station, I believe, or someone over here did. And early on in this project, that was my concern as chairman of building use for a couple of years here. We've been working on that project. And that was something that was important to me is that that, that project would still be doable because I see the importance in it. So we did check into that. And Betty, my predecessor, <coughs> predecessor Richard Leonard, and uh, Car Dr. Carl Table, they'd be calling me up if, and actually one of them did already to make sure that the flood program capital improvements program would go on to cover that part of it. So that was something we thought about all along, along with this, those two issues. The other thing is, is my daughter, several years ago, bought her for, first home, my youngest girl. And the first thing she said to me, Dad, if I buy this house, what happens if I lose my job? And Rick loses his job. Do I lose my house? I said, well, Lisa, you could. You may have some of your equity left, but you could lose your house. Every single person that bought a house has that risk of losing their home, unless they have enough money to pay cash for it. As long as they can pay their taxes, they're going to keep their home. And I did talk to Val today, too. So just wanted to make that known. And uh, another thing I do is this morning, I, I stayed home from work today. I had a day of vacation. And I uh, did some things around the house. But between 6.30 and 7 o'clock, I was sending out probably, I think I sent two, two, two emails to Pat, one to the mayor, one to Steve, uh, Pete Fullerton got one. I, Ed, I sent one to Human Resources. And part of these are because people sent me emails during the night or had questions that I had to follow up on. But you have to do the work. And uh, that it includes attending meetings and communicating with the staff to find out your information. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. All the reports. Thank you, Your Honor. As you know, I ask a lot of questions. That's how I get to a comfort level on something I'm going to vote on. I will be voting for this today, but I just also want to reiterate that although I'm supporting this document, I'm still objecting to the 99-year leases for a dollar. I think that's the one thing I'm not comfortable with, but overall, I will be voting for it. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Roll call. Pat, please call the roll. Mamie? Aye. 
No, it isn't. Should I turn one? Yeah, it's very okay. good. Okay. Bauman? Aye. Perez? Aye. Wangaman? Wangaman? Oh, excuse me, no. Dean Van Akron? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Warner? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Moody? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Stephan? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Congratulations, Council. Good job. Before we take a break, I just want to say one thing. As we find accord on agreement, which we will both, which will both change and enhance Sheboygan's, Sheboygan long into the future, I would like to extend the most sincere thanks to several groups of citizens who worked tirelessly and had the foresight to visualize what the Great Lakes development will mean to our community. I thank both the Sheboygan Development Corp and the Friends of Sheboygan for their commitment and belief in this project and for their financial support. I extend my deepest thanks to our city attorney, our city staff, Steve McLean, Rich Gebhardt, our finance director, Tom Holton, our public works director, and Paulette Enders, who could not be with us tonight, but Pete's in her place. For their undying efforts and dedication to providing the best deal possible for our city, our citizens. These four individuals worked evenings and weekends over the past several months to help draft agreement which will both protect and enhance our city's future. Lastly, I'd like to thank the aldermen who voted in support of this project for being able to make a long-term commitment to a project which will, define, which will define our future. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's take a five-minute break and we'll return. Okay, we'll call the council order. Pat, will you call the roll, please? D. Berg. He's not here. He's excused. He is? Oh, he, he had to go home, yeah. E. Berg. Here. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Excused. Moody. Here. Perez. Here. Ports. Here. Schultz. Here. My not on. Yeah, it is. Stephan. Here. D. Van Akron. Here. T. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Wongaman. Here. I dropped it. That's why I don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going here. Wangaman. I'm sorry. Did you, Wangaman. Bill, are you here? Are you here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Warner. Here. Winninger. Here. Bauman. Here. 14 present. Quorum's present. Before we get back into the agenda, D, would you like to say something? And you can use the microphone if you want to back. Sure, on behalf of the Sheboygan Development Corporation Board, we're going to have a reception for the aldermen over at Community Bank and Trust. If you'd like to join us afterwards, um, it will be non-alcoholic beverages <laughs> and hors d'oeuvres, but uh, we, want to, we want to keep it light for you tonight. So we'd appreciate it if you can join us. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Now, keeping with the tradition, a lot of you don't remember because you haven't been on a council long enough to remember it. But generally, when an alderman serves on a council for many years, that alderman gets the opportunity to run the last council meeting of the year. And since we have four aldermen up here and two, two long timers, I asked Val or Terry which one won, and Terry said to let Val do it. And I want to acknowledge that Alderman Ports has been here six years, correct? Yeah. And Alderman Berg has been here four years. So we appreciate you being here and for all the hard work you have done on the council and for the citizens of Sheboygan. And uh, good luck on whatever you do um, after tonight. Or if you go back into politics in a different area, uh, good luck in that. Thank but thank you for serving on the council. 
So with that, Alderman Schultz, I will turn the meeting over to you. What a mistake. <laughs> Was my microphone on? <laughs> I don't mind taking shots, Steve, but from you? You go, sir. You went to high school better than older than me. He was a couple years Pat may tell you to turn her light on, but that, I'll let that up to you if you want to do that or not. All right, I'll, I'll turn her off. You can turn my light on any day. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I like the view from up here. Before we continue, though, I, I do have some remarks, and I think I'll make them at this time. Um, again, thank you, Mayor, for this opportunity. I want to begin by thanking the voters of the 5th District for giving me the privilege of serving them for 12 and one half years. I want to thank former Mayor Schneider for giving me my start on the council and the opportunities he presented me with by the various committee appointments he gave me, and you, Mayor Schramm, for continuing those opportunities and experiences for me. My peak year was in 2000, 2001, when I was on 13 different committees. My low year was my first year, and now my last year on the council with three committee appointments. I've enjoyed my time on the council, and because of this, I leave with mixed emotions. It has been a tremendously fulfilling and rewarding experience in that for 12 and one half years, I have had the opportunity, opportunity to be a part of the decision-making process, shaping and giving direction to our city for the future. 1997-98, I was council president. In my speech to the council at that time, I said downtowns were becoming cultural centers rather than commercial centers. We see that today with the Wild Center for the Performing Arts, the Children's Museum, the expansion of the Kohler Arts Center, the library remodeling and expansion, all tremendous improvements and attractions to our downtown. The Sheboygan Marina and Harbor Center that I enthusiastically supported from the beginning has been an attraction encouraging economic development in this area. The Johnson Bank, developer Tom Schaefer's new office building, plus all the other many historic buildings renovated now occupied and doing business. This evening, we approved the development agreement with Great Lakes Companies for development of a portion of the South Pier District. We heard there is risk in the project, but there is risk in, and expense in doing nothing also. With the amount of scrutiny, planning, and negotiating put into this project and the support of the Sheboygan Development Corporation, the Chamber of Commerce, the Friends of Sheboygan, I think the risk has been minimized and the project deserves the council approval it received this evening. I believe this development will encourage further development and when the South Pier District is fully developed will be an area Sheboygan will be proud of. You do not sit on this council for 12 and one half years and be effective without the support of many others. For that support I owe a lot of people a huge thank you. I will not mention names because I will surely miss someone. I want to thank all the department heads and their staffs, every one of them, for the cooperation and assistance they have given me. Everyone came through 100% every time when asked for information or assistance. This includes the elected offices, the mayor's office, the city attorney, and the city clerk. All the city clerk has always given me a hard time. Their staffs have been fantastic, including the, including the clerk. Some departing advice for the council. I was told once by a fellow alder person when I asked for his support on an issue, you did not support me, so I cannot support you. This kind of attitude is simply wrong. Every issue needs to be considered and supported or not supported on its own merits, not whether or not you supported a previous issue. Do your homework. If you have questions, call the department head or whomever the question relates to. They are all more than willing to work with you. You will be faced with many challenges in the future like we have not seen before. With declining revenues and increasing costs, stormwater management, a new police station, South Pier development, all requiring huge sums of money, these challenges can be opportunities. Opportunities to form partnerships with the county on some. As chairman of the Shared Services Committee for a number of years, I believe the framework is there for forming partnerships. The county and city will be faced with similar challenges that can be worked on together. 
I think the addition of the county administrator position and Adam Payne has been a very positive move for the county. I found Adam always friendly and easy to work with. I still believe a city administrator would be a positive addition for the city and would like to see that become a reality someday. Along with, along with that, a smaller council, possibly eight members elected citywide rather than by district. I want to congratulate Alderman Terry Van Akron on his election to the state legislature. He served us well on the council and I am sure he will continue to do so on the state level. And congratulations, Terry. I want to thank Alderman Eldenburg and Bill Ports as they leave the council. Both of them professionals in different fields brought their skills and insight to this council in a way they can both be proud of. Both will be missed. I would like to welcome Jim Graff, Anthony Bonet, Marilyn Montemayor, Jim and Anthony returning to council and Marilyn as a new member. Lastly, my replacement, Eric Reinfleisch. I do not know Eric, but I have met him and talked with him a couple of times. I am impressed with him. It is comforting to be replaced by someone I feel can do as well or maybe even better than I did. I always want to see the system improve and I hope and feel Eric will be an improvement to that system. Thank you. With that, we'll continue with the agenda. Alderman Van Akron. <laughs> make, make it polite, whatever it is, Terry. <laughs> um, Alderman Schultz, thank you. I would ask on the consent agenda, first of all, I would ask that we pull number 2619, and I would ask that that be referred to the Public Works Committee of the new council. Motion has been made seconded to pull 2619 and refer that to the Public Works Committee of the new council. Under discussion. If none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Chair votes aye, opposed? Thank you, uh, Alderman Schultz. Now, 26 1 through 26. Wow. 26. 43. 43. I would move that the communication be accepted and filed, the ROs be accepted and filed, the committee reports be accepted and adopted, resolutions and substitute resolutions all be put upon their passage, and the general ordinance be put upon their passage. 26-1 through 26-43, motion has been made and seconded to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs and general ordinances, and pass all resolutions. Under discussion. If none, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Roll call. That's right. I do need the clerk. Eberg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Stephen Akron? Aye. Stephen Akron? Aye. Vanderwiel? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. 14 aye. 2644 to be referred, 2645, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, uh, Alderman Schultz. I would move that the res Say what? We need suspension. Okay. I would move, ask for suspension. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Motion is made. <laughs> And seconded for suspension under discussion. If none, go ahead, Alderman Van Akron. I would move that the resolution, it's a resolution authorizing transfers of funds to provide monies to establish revenue and appropriation to, from a donation received for Maywood Environmental Trust of Sheboygan County to plant materials at Maywood. I would ask that that resolution be put upon its passage. Motion has been made and seconded. Resolution 2645 to be put upon this passage. Uh, under discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. Roll call. Roll call. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Torres? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Aye. Lewis? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. 14 ayes. 
2646, does that lie over? Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the uh, report of committee. Second. Uh, is the uh, defendant number 5705 license holder here to speak in his behalf? It appears not, sir. Any discussion? If not, roll call. Moody? Aye. Aye. Stephen? Aye. Stephen Acton? Aye. Stephen Acton? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Eber? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 14 ISC. Let's get 43. 43 was in the consent agenda? Yes, yes. it was. Twenty six forty seven, twenty six forty eight, and twenty six forty nine are referred. Twenty six fifty by finance recommending amending the debt policy for the city's limit on the annual debt service debt issuance up to three million dollars per year for non TIF projects. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that on twenty six fifty, fifty one, fifty two, and fifty three, all from finance committee. Uh, first one is the debt issuance. The second one is recommending transfers and appropriations for the 2003 budget and the capital improvements budget and passing the substitute resolutions. 52 is a finance recommending authorizing the South Pier Great Lakes project for an exemption of limits imposed on a resolution and the limits of the amounts invested in the city futures TIF district and finance recommending filing documents from capital improvements programs for 2003 and six through seven and passing the substitute resolution, I would move that all four of those be put upon their passage. Could you do the second, sir? Under discussion. If none, we need a roll call. Perez? Aye. Porris? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Steven Akron? Aye. Steven Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody. Aye. 14 ayes. 2655 by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Manny, Vanderweel, and Wenninger amending the municipal code relating to the licensing of amusement devices. Alderman Warner, and we need suspension. Uh, thank you, Alderman Schultz. Uh, that I move for suspension. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for suspension under discussion. I have to. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have to ask why okay. we need suspension. Alderman Warner. I'll explain why. I'm going to have to ask Pat to explain why because I didn't know I needed suspension. So it's Pat. coming from committee. It's the last night of council. We cannot have it lie over. It has to be passed or referred. <laughs> Alderman Van Akron it's always, is. It's is always that, the same on the last night of the council. Right. Alderman Van Akron, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Under discussion, uh, I would make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Under this motion, as been made and seconded to, uh, for the general ordinance be put under, uh, upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Alderman Schultz. This ordinance relates to licensing of amusement devices within the city. Amusement, amusement devices have changed dramatically and no longer are simply pool tables and dart machines. We have all seen the video amusement machines in many establishments throughout the city. This issue was brought to the licensing function of the Public Protection and Safety Committee for consideration and after review at numerous meetings with the clerk's office and city attorney, this ordinance came about. This is common in most cities throughout Wisconsin. Our fees are in line with other communities and are capped at $100 to address the large amusement business concerns. The committee recommends passage. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, roll call. Porritz? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Stephen Ackman? Aye. Stephen Ackman? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. Eber? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 14 hours. Alderman Van Ackman, down here, light is blinking. Did I pass you up or was that from? No, it's still on from last okay. time. 
But on 2555, Your Honor, um, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage for the pur purchasing agent to enter into a contract for workman's comp compensation, compensation claims services. And the next one, 2556, a resolution a resolution authorizing a transfer of appropriations into 2003 budget. I would move both that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion has been made and seconded for 2555 and 2556. Both resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. If none, we need a roll call. Roll call. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Stephen Akron? Aye. Stephen Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wongeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Eber? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. 14 ayes. 2656 is going to the Capital Improvements Commission of the New Council. 2657 by Alderman Warner. Uh, communication by Alderman Warner from Tanya Schwinn, encouraging a vote for the new, uh, new resort, water park, and civic center at the lakefront. That can be accepted and filed, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Alderman Schultz, on that and make a motion to accept the file communication. Motion has been made and seconded to accept and file 2657 under discussion. If none, all in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? 2658, NRC by the Marina Negotiations Committee recommended filing documents relative to the Harbor Center Marina. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Alderman. Or Van Akron, I mean, I'm sorry. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your, Your Honor. On 2658, I'd like to also include 2659 right away, a strategic uh, RC from the Street Strategic Fiscal Planning Commission recommending uh, filing various documents relating to the ambulance service. I would move that both committee reports be accepted and adopted. And the third one, 2660, I'm sorry, I flipped over the page. An RC from the St Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee recommending reference of documents relative to the budget reductions. We don't have yeah. a motion for that. We just referred that. Okay, I'm sorry. I need a second. Motion has been made and, sec made and seconded to accept and adopt the two RCs, 2658 and 59, under discussion. If none, all in favor of motion say aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? 2660 has been referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee of the New Common Council. Um, Alderman Van Akron. Steve is supposed to read this. Other, ma other matters. 2661 is a communication from Patrick and Amy Coat urging a vote against the Blue Harbor project. That, that can be accepted and filed. Uh, Alderman Warner? Motion to accept and file. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept and file 2661 under discussion. If none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? 20, oh, um, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, I guess, Your Honor, before I adjourn, if Alderman Berg would like to make a comment, Alderman Ports, their final comments for the council, I guess we could do that before, and I'll make mine when I make the announcement to adjourn. Alderman Bauman, did you have something? Yes, I did. Okay, why don't we take you first and your light is on. Well, as usual, I guess everyone knows that I do tend to stand up before everyone else makes their comments, but Alderman Schultz beat me to the punch earlier. So needless to say, I'll, uh, I'll just start in. I mean, as we all know, tonight marks the end of another council year. And what we did this year was tremendous. Tonight's action will be with this city for a very long time, and I hope it's going to turn out wonderfully. Like I said, as usual, I get up and speak about our members who will not be with us this next council year. I'll try not to be as rash as I had been in the past, although it was fun, and it was all really in fun. So I guess I'll start out with our council president, Terry Van Eckren, of course. You've been a fixture here for about how long? 30 years? 
<laughs> Something like that, right? Well, I couldn't remember exactly, but I know you've been here longer than I have. I know you're in and out here and there, but you've still been here much longer than He's I have. He's not much over 30, Dennis. He couldn't have been up here. <laughs> Even you, a couple of weeks ago, made a comment that you know you've been here for a long time, but you can remember the clothing styles that the mayor, the clerk, and the city attorney were all wearing. So uh, that's another thing, too. And another thing, we are definitely going to need another person to object when we do suspend the rules. I mean, you were good at that. No, don't look at me. <laughs> I mean, you were extremely good at that. And I tell you one, very honestly, I am going to miss looking up to you. Not only as a member of this council, but also as a true friend. Good luck in the state assembly. And of course, we will all miss you. Now I'm going to move on. Gee, Mr. Schultz, I'm looking <laughs> at you at the moment. You too have been here fixture for quite a long time. Since your retirement from Wisconsin Public Service, Every time I came into City Hall, you were here, and you had made those comments earlier that you came up and visited quite often. Are you sure you really didn't have a room somewhere up here that you stayed in? Because really, you were always here. Your dedication to this community will be remembered by many for a long, long time. And of course, we will miss your very colorful commentary. Bill, you told me last year that if you weren't reelected, you didn't want to be here the last night of council because I always make these type of comments. <laughs> well, as an accountant, you and numbers are always one and the same. You always came prepared, which is one good thing. Never unchallenging when you needed to make a point. But we always knew when you were nearly finished with your speaking. How could we tell? Your words just faded away to a soft mumble. That is a trait I know I'm going to miss, and good luck in the future. And now, the last question. Will you run for mayor, as the newspaper said? <laughs> and Mr. Berg. You're always a man who is never at a loss for words. And I've served on several committees with you. And you could make a bad situation to something very cheerful. Wherever you hide that bottle, I need some of that. As a public works chairman, you entertained as well as being a good chairperson. The sewage treatment plant must have really intrigued you. Why? Because every time we had public comment and concern for the meetings, you would ask if they were here for the pickle liquor issue. <laughs> it's really not what you think, folks. Honest, it's not. We will truly miss your leadership qualities. And we'll know where to find you this summer, won't we? Once more, good luck in the future to the four of you who are leaving this Common Council. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Alderman Parts. Thank you, Alderman Schultz. I'm really not one to prepare speeches, but I did enjoy working with everybody. I have great admiration for both you and Terry Van Acken. Consider both of you to be friends. I, I enjoy working with both, both of you. Um, I, everybody enjoys Eldon. You know, you two tend to fight sometimes, but uh, I got along with both of you, and you were both wonderful. Uh, I enjoyed working with the staff and the other aldermen, and that's what I'm going to miss. I'm not going to miss the phone calls. I'm not going to miss laying awake at night thinking about an issue. And um, I'm happy that Jim Graff's replacing me. He's a good friend and a capable person. But uh, everybody that called me the last year with an issue, he's been out of office for a year. Give him a call. Let him know what's going on. <laughs> Don't call me anymore. <laughs> Alderman Warner. I think I followed Dennis a little bit on this because I've been doing this every year too. In fact, I did it for, for the gentleman that I replaced on the council when I came in and it was his last night. Uh, this is always a somewhat unpleasant night when you have to say goodbye to some of your friends and colleagues. Yet it does provide an opportunity to express your gratitude 
and remember the accomplish accomplishments and challenges that we overcame together. Alderman Bill Ports has been seated in front of me since I joined the council four years ago. Bill has been a valuable and important part of the Common Council. His accounting background has provided a sort of check and balance when we discuss financial matters. Often Bill would shine light on issues that at least I had not even considered. Bill, it has been a pleasure working with you and I thank you for your service to Sheboygan. Thank you. And Alderman Schultz, I did not go back to check on how many years Val had served his constituents and the city, not because I wasn't curious, but because many of the decisions Val has made over the years will remain long after his departure. Always well thought out, always presented without a doubt about his belief. Val has been a contributor and will be missed by all of us. Sometime in the future I expect to hear from Val again. He'll probably want to have parking restricted around a school or a park or someplace like that. Alderman Schultz, thank you for all you've done for Sheboygan. And Eldon. Thank you. Alderman Eldenberg, what can I say? Eldon helped change the way I looked at a lot of things. His wit and viewpoint have been enjoyed by all of us at one time or another. In every committee Eldon has served, his impact has been significant, and he's always been a pleasure to work with. Eldon, my friend and colleague, I will certainly miss you. I have no clue what we'll do on the 4th of July after grabbing a bite to eat at the Mayor's Brat Fry in the Community Center. I hope you keep your boat in the marina so we can stop and have one with you. Eldon, take a break, some, spend some time with Fran and the family, but don't forget about your friends. Thanks for all you've done, Eldon. And Alderman Van Akron, State Representative Van Akron. You, my friend, are a man of many accomplishments. Your leadership on this council and for the city has been second to none. Your impact, your imprint, will be difficult for anyone to come close to. In my first years in the council, I remember well the battles we had and how funny it was when we actually agreed, as, as often as you said, I actually agree with Alderman Warner. I think I at least matched with a few where I actually agreed with Alderman Van Akron. Terry Van Akron. <laughs> anyway, I've learned a lot from you, especially in the past year, and I thank you for that. As a longtime chairman of Public Works and the past year's chair of finance, you've worked hard to keep Sheboygan on a level course to her future. I don't know if there's any committee that you have not served on. I do know that on every committee you have served, you did your job well and with the best interests of the city in mind. Terry, you have served the city at the highest level possible in all that you have done, and I know you will continue to represent us well in the State Assembly. Although you are leaving this council, you are not leaving the city of Sheboygan. And we will call on you often for help at the state level, and I'm sure you will respond. Thank you, Representative Van Akron. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Vala. It's kind of, I've given eulogies, but I've never been uh, the subject of one, so it's rather <laughs> unusual to uh, uh, take this occasion to uh, uh, contemplate that. Uh, I guess a couple things. We, we know many things about Sheboygan. Sheboygan is the best place uh, in the United States to raise a family, and it's also the best place in the United States to be an alderman. Being an alderman is the best low-paying job you can get in the city. <laughs> no man, you're not going to organize, okay? Uh, uh, I don't know what the future holds. I may want to do a support group for used aldermen, so if any of you are interested, please see me after the meeting, and thank you all very much. Thank you all, and, and again, Mayor, a sincere thank you to you for everything. It's been appreciated, and uh, look forward to, I look forward to some time off now. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, I want to thank I, everyone. I caught that, Terry. You said yes. Your Honor. That's twice already. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for uh, serving the city of Sheboygan. It's been a great honor to have been the president the last year. Um, all of you I consider friends and, and we, it, it takes a lot to give up your time and effort for the city of Sheboygan and I commend all of you for, for doing that. You know, this is the third time I've stepped out on the council and somehow I always get pulled back to this so I never say goodbye, I just say, wait, I'll be back. Um, this time I uh, am gonna be representing the city still in, in capacity at Madison. I ask all of you to have input, please. Um, many of you already have my email address and I get inundated with questions and, and I feel good about that. Um, I'm there to represent the people of the city just like you are and I need your input and I need your help. And I'll continue to ask for that. 
it's been an honor uh, to have done this in the last 15 plus years. Um, as I said, I don't say goodbye, I just say we'll be back sometime. And upon that, I'm going to ask to uh, move to adjourn. And on the adjourn, on that motion, the three of us are putting a three-man hold on the motion to adjourn for this evening. So I, Alderman Ports, and Berg will put a three-man hold on the all so we don't have to leave. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor you want your chair back? <laughs> The, the city clerk just gave me her legal opinion. She says it's not legal to do that on the last <laughs> meeting of the year. <laughs>